Hi, thanks for joining me. Um, I've spent a significant amount of time in some of my other videos talking about how we model the structure of atoms. And that is so critical because structure determines function. Now, what's so nice is the periodic table beautifully laid out models of structure like electron configuration, which in turn could readily, readily be converted into an orbital diagram. And so that's really, really neat. What we're finding on the periodic table is that we have trends, properties that vary predictably either down a group or across a period. Um, depending on how you are viewing it. So I always like to label things in terms of how they increase. So when I'm memorizing, I want to know what direction things increase. And what we're going to find for atomic radius is that you want to shoot towards Francium. So the atomic radius increases right to left and it increases down a group. So I say shoot for francium for your atomic radius. The closer it is to francium, the bigger it is um, as you go down a group and from right to left for atomic radius. Well, what is the atomic radius? The atomic radius is typically measured by taking a bond. So we would take a bond length. The reason is, is that the edge of atoms is really kind of fuzzy. It's, you know, atoms are mostly empty space. So to measure kind of the edge of an atom, you're really measuring kind of a fuzzy region. But if we have a bond, we have a much firmer measure. So what you're going to do is measure a metallic bond or a covalent bond, and you're going to take half of that. And half of that is then going to give you the radius of the atom if you take half that bond, okay? Now, why does it increase down a group? So atomic radius increases down a group. The biggest reason, and by the way, Coulomb's law is such a big help here. So think Coulomb's law. Um, as you go down a group, electrons are entering increasingly higher energy levels. Remember the energy level is given by the quantum number n. These are further from the nucleus. So it's bound to, if you've got the nucleus here and you have n equals 1 and you have n equals 2, and n equals 3, and n equals 4, right? n equals 4 electron, if an outer electron is an n equal 4, compared to n equals 1, it's further from the nucleus. It can't get any closer to the nucleus because of electron-electron repulsion. So that's always one of the first things you want to look at when you're looking at periodic trends is you want to list the n value. So if you're comparing two elements, the first thing you want to do if I'm comparing A and B is you want to compare their outer n value. Okay. Now, another thing I want you to note is this, and I did it in particular in this drawing. Do you notice that my energy levels converge? To converge means to get closer and closer and closer together. So if I have an element in n equal 1 and I'm comparing it to n equals 2, their size difference will be greater than if I was comparing two elements further out, say between n equals 3 and n equals 4. And it's important to realize that these energy levels are not equally spaced. They converge. This is a very important term. Okay, When you think of Coulomb's law, you have a charge, electrons are negative, 
you have a positive nuclear charge. Electrons that are further away, as you increase distance, you decrease attraction. So there's Coulomb's law in action. Okay, what about across a period? So remember I said if you're comparing two elements, you want to look at their end value. So if I had elements um, A and B, you want to look at their end value, and then you also want to look at their nuclear charge. So in this one, what I want us to do is I want us to compare boron and fluorine. Now, they're going, we're going across a period, their electrons have the same outer energy level. Their outer electrons are both in the principal quantum number n equals 2. So you might say, well, shouldn't n equal 2 be the same distance from a nucleus? And that answer is a resounding no. That's because the second thing you always want to compare before you answer these periodic trends is what is the nuclear charge. The nuclear charge, there are five protons in boron, so its nuclear charge is plus five. For fluorine, it's plus nine. Now remember Coulomb's law for potential energy. It's proportional to the charge of the positive, the charge of the negative, over the distance. Since fluorine has such a stronger positive charge, so fluorine has got this plus 9, borons is only plus 5, n equal 2 for fluorine is going to be pulled in closer than n equals 2 for boron because the electrons feel a stronger attraction to that nuclear charge. So fluorine's n equal 2 electrons are closer to the nucleus due to an increase in nuclear charge that has a stronger attraction. So that means fluorine's atomic radius is smaller than boron's. That's why when I did this, it increases from right to left. These are smaller due to an increase in nuclear charge compared to the ones to the left of them. Okay, so to summarize, to tell us what the trend is, shoot for Francian. To explain the trend, you need to get down to the atomic level and talk about energy levels and nuclear charge. And it really helps to invoke Coulomb's law. Okay, thanks for joining me. I always appreciate your time. Now, at least for my kids, I'm their best chemistry teacher because I'm their only chemistry teacher. I hope I'm at least one of your good chemistry teachers. Good luck with your journey of chemistry.